morning. Uh, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on structural systems in architecture. So, this course is a 8 week course and this course is uh, floated for the students of uh, architecture basically and uh, this uh, course as you all know the NPTEL platform and this course is be, will be uh, covered the various uh, systems and the applications of the structure in the field of architecture. Uh, let, uh, introduce, I will, uh, let me introduce myself, uh, I am uh, Dr. S. P. Bhattacharji, Shankha Pratim Bhattacharji, I am a faculty in the Department of Architecture and Regional Planning, IIT Kharagpur. This is my second uh, online NPTEL course, the first course which was floated the last two years, uh, that was the building acoustics with another professor of our department. So, today we will go with the first module and the lecture number 1 that is the, the introduction to structures which is a lecture title and the module 1 we will cover uh, the statics and structural systems <coughs> which will take uh, 5 uh, lecture of half an hour duration. So, I will going to cover these 5 or 6 uh, these uh, concepts, uh, we will start with some kind of the outline of the course. Uh, then the key features and the learning objective of the course, then we will uh, define the structures and the structural systems, then we will move into the, the types of structural systems and finally, the objective of the structural engineering. <coughs> so, the, what are the line, learning objective of this particular half an hour lecture today is uh, we will initiate the course overview. So, you will have a kind of a uh, uh, understanding the how the course will run and what are the things to be done in the course. Then we will go to the basic understanding of the structural systems and then uh, we will uh, uh, discuss some of the requirement of the structures in the building, why a structure is required and uh, what is the consideration, uh, special consideration for the structure has to be taken while a uh, architect uh, decide upon the building design or the architectural design of a building. So, in the course outline as I discussed, this is our first uh, concept uh, uh, of, um, of this particular uh, lecture today. So, uh, we have 8 modules, each module will run for one each uh, week. In the first module, we will uh, discuss the statics and the structural systems, uh, which is the, the, uh, the first lecture is today. The structures and its classification uh, we will discuss, we will discuss the force system, then the supports and the reactions loading etcetera. Then the module 2 and the module 3, again two of this, uh, uh, this consecutive week, we will discuss the structural mechanics, the part 1 and the part 2, where the theory of elasticity, the material properties, the bending and the shear, the stresses, different type of stresses due to the bending and the shear, the deflection of the members, structural members and some of the theory of the columns will be discussed. So, uh, as you all know the structures, uh, if you uh, try to look into, you have to know about some of the basics of uh, the so, uh, mechanics, the mechanics and the some kind of the, the solid mechanics also. So, we will cover this uh, module 1 and the module 2 and also the module 3, the all. The module 4, uh, the fourth week we will do the frame structure analysis and the design. So, mostly the buildings are of uh, kind of frame structure as you know. So, what are the, uh, the, the, the methods of analysis, what are the structural element in the frames and the application of different type of the frames in the architecture and also the design principles for the RCC and the steel structure will be discussed. Then, in the fifth, sixth and seventh module, we will cover the whole lot of the structural concept application and advantage, disadvantage, some of the case studies for various type of structural systems. That will include in module number 5, that will include truss and space frame, which are the very two, I mean the very important two uh, type of structural systems, what we see in the today's world. We will also discuss the arch, shell and dome. Uh, another category of the structural systems in the module 6 and module 7 we will discuss the tensile uh, structures and the plate structures. 
So, both uh, uh, the, uh, the concept we will start with for all uh, every uh, component of the structural systems and we will discuss the various applications in architecture through some case studies. The last module, the module number 8 will be uh, deal with the spatial structures that includes the pneumatic structures, the tensile gritty which are the uh, typical type of structure which sometimes employed in the, uh, the buildings in a, uh, in, in a uh, temporary kind of a shelter accommodation accommodating people in various forms. And uh, we will also discuss some of the cost effective technology used for the uh, buildings uh, and what are the structural impact of that how to reduce the cost of the structures particularly in the, the, the domain of the low cost building technology. And uh, we will also discuss the building foundation because without the foundation discussion of the foundation uh, uh, the structure uh, cannot be I mean the, the discussion of the structure or the knowledge of the structure cannot be completed. At the end we will discuss some of the high rise structural systems also but in a very brief form. So, this is the, the course outline for the 8 modules. Now, what are the key feature of the course? Let us discuss this key feature of the course that will uh, definitely going to uh, help you in understanding the how this course will move. As you all know or as I have al already discussed that this particular NPTEL uh, lecture course on structural systems uh, in architecture is focused or designed specially for the students of architecture B arc in various uh, universities and the institute in our country. So, we have to we, we have I have taken care of the syllabus of the all the, the institute almost of the all the institute and as per the guidelines of the council of architecture. And uh, uh, we will discuss the concept and uh, the through the lectures and uh, we will actually discuss some of the real life examples through some illustration some figures some kind of notations and all. We will also discuss the theories of structures or the, the theory behind the structural systems to be adopted because without the theories uh, it is very difficult to understand the where and uh, when I will going to use those kind of a structure. Basic theories is very much important, so we will demonstrate that one, but it will be in conceptual way and it will have the minimum mathematical computation because uh, we are not going to deal the uh, uh, structural engineering or the this uh, structural systems as a particular civil engineering faculty uh, do for the civil engineering students. So, we have to keep in mind that uh, or I have to keep in mind that uh, I am teaching this to the student of architecture. So, I have to bypass those critical mathematical computations and all. But Definitely some simple mathematical things, simple mathematical formula, some of the small algorithms will be discussed in very, very conceptual level. And the prime focus of uh, this course will be understanding the structural systems is advantage application in the architectural design. Because as you all know the students of architecture basically focus on the design or the architectural design of the building. So, while you will go for a kind of a design based on your design principles and the design philosophy and also the design concept, a, uh, the building has to be stand by the uh, structural system. So, I have just now told that there are various types of structural systems you may use for that, but which one will be advantageous, which one will be, uh, will be uh, very much uh, the fit for that particular uh, design or so that you must understand after this particular course. The learning objective for the course sir, the it will definitely if you go through the all the 8 weeks if you participate in the assignment if you participate in our forum and all <coughs> it will clarify your fundamentals of structural engineering, clarify the, the various salient points of the fundamentals in the structural engineering. It will correlate the theories of structure with the, uh, the behavior of the structure. So, uh, how the structural theories are developed based on the behavior pattern of the particular structure that we will going to understand. You can analyze and design basic structural element, but of course, this third point will be a bit of uh, in, a, uh, in a very uh, simple type of structural element you can design, you cannot 
probably not going to design the complicated one. You can compare and evaluate the various structural systems that is very much important for a students of architecture because uh, suppose for a particular your in, a, in your design you can apply or you can actually uh, I, I, uh, uh, provide various type of systems, but you have to actually evaluate that you have to compare that and then only you can think to provide that kind of a thing. You also you can apply and appreciate the structural systems into the design of the studio exercise. I have already told that in your studio exercise it will be definitely it will be improved in of your uh, structural uh, systems application of that. And definitely the last but not the least you can perform well in the competitive examinations and the job interviews particularly competitive examinations I am focusing the examination like gate examinations and maybe some other examinations which uh, are uh, going to be asked, they are going to ask some of the basic questions on the structures. Now, let us come to the, the, uh, the, the, the actual uh, the objective of the, the prime objective of the lecture number 1, uh, what are the, st what is the uh, structure and uh, the how you can define a particular structure. The structure of a building or object is, uh, is responsible for maintaining the shape of the building and to uh, uh, by virtue of some of the loads, the external loads. So, external loads are always going to apply even a particular structure any kind of a building or maybe any kind of a building. The structures and buildings are have some kind of a difference. Suppose, building as you all know, but structures may be a bridge may be a structure, a transmission tower may be a structure, a dam may be another structure. So, all the structures are having some kind of load, the external load which will apply on the particular object. The loads actions are gravitational load by virtue of its weight or sometimes some kind of environmental loads like wind or maybe some kind of the earthquake or maybe some kind of tide, tidal wave or whatever. So, uh, a, a structure has to take care of those. It is important uh, uh, that that a particular structure as a whole should stand and also partially or maybe in t I mean the individual level also should not break down uh, or maybe deformed or uh, with a when the this kind of load or forces are applied on. And also this is another important thing is that it should not deflect or uh, break or whatever, but it should actually safely transmit the all the loads that come on the building or the particular structural systems and those resulting force must be uh, must be must be uh, uh, grounded must be grounded properly through some supportive system which is called actually foundation and finally it should maintain the integrity and the serviceability of the build form the what is the integrity and what is the serviceability we will discuss today itself in a little later so, as I know that uh, the if I say now that uh, the definition of the structure which I have just now completed, now what is the structural systems, what is the definition of the structural systems? There is a fine uh, uh, difference between a structure and the structural systems. Any structure is compressed of the structural elements and the non-structural element. I have just in my PPT, I have written down there are some uh, element of the structure which is suppose the beam is one and suppose the column is another one slab is something like a, a two dimensional thing truss you know that kind of a truss is there. So, those are the typical type of structural systems whereas, the partition wall fall ceiling all those all those door window parapet etcetera some flooring some kind of uh, uh, mock up kind of a wall decor and all those kind of things are come under the non structural element. Now, those uh, uh, structural elements and those if you now put together all the, the structural element uh, you will get the structural system. So, the structural element may be a, your beam or maybe your uh, column. So, if you just put into this plus put into this, then you will get a particular structural systems also. So, the structural elements and the structural systems has a kind of a, 
differentiation or so. So, now let us discuss about some uh, type of the some of the type of the structures which are applicable to different type of uh, uh, systems or different type of uh, um, uh, the objects. The first of all is the building, building is one of the key issue in our architecture. So, in buildings if you see there are three uh, pictures and uh, in that uh, the, the first one the left side one is a tall building. So, it has a different element it has different structural systems. The lower one is a uh, in a arena where there are a long span uh, is a, a long span structural systems are very lightweight kind of a structural systems are required which is definitely uh, very very uh, different from the, the tall building or the high rise building. And the third one is a uh, structural systems is a curvilinear structural systems which is a kind of a arch or those kind of a things are there. But if you see all the three, they are actually uh, take care of some of the building or the habitat. There are some towers or the bridges also. The Eiffel Tower or maybe the, 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 the leaning tower of the Pisa is uh, the wonderful example of the structural systems. It still stands for uh, the quite uh, long period of the time. The central picture is the, the Vidyasagar Shetu of uh, Kolkata city which connects the, the Howrah and Kolkata uh, over the river of Ganga. So, that is also a, a fabulous structural systems has been used for that particular bridge. So, structural systems can be applied for any kind of the buildings, tower, bridges and all. So, there are different type of systems has to be adopted for different kind of the execution or for the applic applicability. So, now let us see the I as I understand the what are the element of the structures are like beam, column, link, plate, member, cable like that. So, there are individual items, a beam is individual items you as you know, it is a horizontal item which is a uh, kind of a uh, taking load in the gravitational direction or the downward direction, whereas the column is a vertical member uh, which can take the load of course, and in a different way it is through the its own axis it can take the load. So, plates are again a two dimensional flat structure. So, those are the elements of the structure. And now depending upon the geometry and the orientation of those elements you can have different type of uh, 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 the different type of vocabulary like the thin and thick. What is thin and thick? Suppose a plate or maybe a wall may be thin or thick. Then the grid and the dimensions, this is an again a geometric property, what is the grid that may be the what is the center to center distance between the footprint of the column. So, those are the grids, what, what is the dimension, the, then the linear and the curvilinear, just I uh, told you there are the curves that is the, the, the arches and all which is the curvilinear, linear may be a straight beam, a straight column may be a linear. Inclined, yes, a wall may be inclined, a plate may be inclined, or maybe a column is also sometimes may be inclined. So, those are a cable may be inclined cable. Then there are some kind of a shapes, triangular, square, the forms like parabolic, yes, the a kind of a uh, the arch may be a parabolic in nature, a cable may be a parabolic in nature. Then the span, the how much is the center to center distance between the supports and the free forms or so those are the geometry and the orientations. Now, if you club those together, so there may be a different type of element and different type of geometrical orientations. So, there may be some permutation combination amongst them and then you can get some kind of a structural systems or the structural configuration. Now, if you take the structural configuration, the nature of the loading you have to also take care of that. So, is it a concentrated load, is it a heavy kind of a moment, is it a wind, it is a seismic load. So, every loading has its own uh, type of uh, the impact. Okay. So, those impact has to be also taken into account when you are going to select some kind of a structural systems or the configuration. And then you have to again take care of some kind of a material, which type of material you may use for your structure. It may be if you suppose you are going for a truss, it may be a steel truss, it may be a RCC truss also. 
So, whenever I am going to have those kind of a material, you need to know some of the material property like ductile property or the ductility or the, the brittle properties or so. And again, <coughs> you should know about the what are the support system that how finally, that particular structure has to be supported through some uh, component like if it is a simply support or it is a cantilever out or it is a continuous kind of a support or it is a flexible kind of a support. So, those are the typical type of support system. So, what I uh, go back to that I mean again, so is the elements and the geometry then gives me the configuration. From the configuration I know that this is the loading type, it is the material I am selecting and then this is the type of support system and after all this comes together. So, I can now analyze a particular structure and I will try to assess the behavior of that particular structure. And what is the behavior gives me? The behavior gives me the is it a stable or unstable? It is a shear predominant things will come or it is a bending, the bending will come in uh, totality with this particular material loading and the support system. What will be the buckling character? How it will going to buckle? Is it going to buckle or not? what how much it will deflect is it going to deflect much or it will be under controllable deflections or so is it going to see i mean uh, they are going to have some kind of a cracks or no sometimes we may allow some non visible kind of a very micro cracks or so. sometimes we may not allow that so that, that those kind of the behavior uh, under those kind of a configuration material and all those gives me some kind of the output and based on that uh, that behavior I will actually now see some of the functions of my architecture. I see the architectural function, I will see the economy, I will see the serviceability, durability, construction technology also I will see suppose some of the materials, some of the systems it is not available in, uh, in my country or maybe some part of the country. So, it is uh, unnecessary to think of those kind of the structural systems or so. So, again finally, you have to see the aesthetics of the building. So, again this will go come into a permutation combination, we will select the typical structural systems also. So, based on that we will going to have some kind of a selection criteria. Now, what are the type of structural systems? If I go uh, uh, one by one, then I may have frames, the building frames in the lower left corner picture you see. This is a normal type of a building which is having frames, frames means the column beam foundation and the slabs. We may have trusses also, we may have some kind of a trusses also, it may use it for the very long span application. We have sometimes the space frames which is again in the lower left corner given in a photograph uh, where there are some kind of the three dimensional trusses can be used and the lower uh, the upper right corner you see the a arch form of uh, space frames can be also going to be used. We may have some kind of a structural systems like arches and vaults, arches in a linear kind of a character, vaults is a three dimensional kind of a character when two such vaults or two such uh, barrels are meeting together perpendicularly a vault will be created. This particular thick picture on the vault is uh, the picture of the corridor of the Calcutta High Court. You see how uh, interestingly the pillars, the columns are taking care of the different type of uh, flying arches in the different direction creating a fabulous interior with vaults. Then there may be some kind of a shell structure, shell is one way ahead of the arches which is a two dimension, three dimensional formulation of the articulation of the arches. So, we can have wonderful structure made up by the shells, the lower uh, left corner structure as you all know it is a Sydney Opera House and the, the upper picture is from our country the New Delhi the Baha'i temple or it is famous uh, it is known as uh, lotus temple also popularly. We can have the domes also, domes are used in the architecture. Uh, in a, uh, in a in a if you see the history of the architecture you will see the lot of uh, 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 in the time period if you see from the islamic or pre islamic period also you will see the 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 domes are used as a roof uh, covering and there are various type of illustration various type of uh, 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 decorations various type of form has been developed uh, in the the timeline in the history of architecture 
So, uh, the lower left corner is the, the Islamic dome which is very much predominant in our forms in our India or maybe in any country. And uh, the other one is the Matri Mandir which is a, uh, in Pondicherry there is a dome uh, is also going to be used for that particular purpose. There are types of structural systems like tensile structure, there are uh, the uh, structures which is very much useful for the stadium or any kind of a arena which is membrane kind of a structure very light weight. There are structures through plates, there are the different type of folded plates arrangements may be possible and those are the uh, again a kind of a solution for the long span structural systems or so. So, based on that we have a kind of understanding of the different type of structural systems. Now, let us going to in the last one that is the what are the objective of our structural engineering. The first objective is definitely the safety, the safety is the first. See a child is sitting on a particular ch uh, chair, a bench, okay. so that particular bench has to take care of the load, the four legs of that particular thing has to be thick, the thickness and the strength has to be such a way that it can take the load of that particular child. There should not be any kind of a cracking which is given in the next photograph that this may huge cracks definitely is going to have uh, the bad impact on particular structure and definitely structure will going to fail. I mean after failure those kind of a crack will appear. So, safety is the first concern. Then the stability, stability you see a, a girl see is pushing a particular table. So, when you push a particular thing from the other direction it should not be topple or buckle or maybe slide or so. So, a structure should be have kind of stability. The strength comes from the, the downward or the gravity loads point of view and the stability comes from the transverse or the lateral load point of view. The second photograph if you see it is a building which is uh, I mean the tilted because of the earthquake. So, it should not be it should have that kind of a strength some kind of a bearing and some kind of a gripping through the foundations or so it should not be unstable. Then there are serviceability kind of a thing, it may be stable, it may be having sufficient amount of safety, but sometimes the serviceability is not there, the beam and the floor is deflected. So, if it is a deflected you cannot uh, have some kind of activity over that, you cannot put a, a chair, you cannot put some kind of a table, it will create a lot of problem <coughs> uh, while walking or those kind of a scenarios or so. Sometimes it will give you some kind of a psychological problems also you may feel that the building is unsafe. So, those kind of uh, kind of the serviceability criteria also has to be fulfilled. Then definitely there are durability criteria also there are for a uh, you will design a structure for 80 or 100 years or so. So, we have to see the how much it can be resistance to the corrosion creep, shrink, creep and shrinkage are the uh, kind of the age uh, phenomena which comes from the particular the when the material is getting old and uh, reduce its particular strength or so. And then there are the another objective is the economy. So, you have to see that the how the uh, efficiently you can use the structural systems such a way that uh, it will give you the it you can design this within your budget. There are other parameters like objective like the ease of maintenance is another issue because you have to actually maintain you cannot actually stay say that the structure uh, once is built it is forever. Also the fire resistance is another issue and finally, this is the, the important issue for our case is the aesthetics. A structural system should also import a aesthetics to the structure I mean the building otherwise if it goes uh, it, it goes uh, others other way around. Uh, it will going to give you a, a lot of uh, problem. So, I have written that one that a engineer a, a, a plays a major role to translate the imagination of an architect to in the uh, grounded into the reality to the through the structural systems. So, if you have a wonderful compositions like the Taj Mahal or maybe the pyramid of Giza, those are the very wonderful compositions of the simple erected structure with a very systematic and the uh, uh, the way it has been designed definitely your structural handling the structural systems for that also will be ease. So, I should not say that you should you should always go with the symmetrical buildings or so it may be of asymmetry, but you have to look into that how those asymmetry can be taken into a particular 
uh, the composed and the unique way in a structural systems also. So, I uh, written in the last that it should it indeed a challenge and the responsibility of a structural engineer to design a structure for appropriate uh, for the appropriate architectural purpose and also should have a right balance between the safety and the economy. So, about the course uh, as we uh, told you this is the 8 week course. So, uh, to total 40 lectures and PPTs and the handouts will be uh, delivered. I will give some kind of the home worksheet also and in that particular uh, each and after each and every lecture uh, and whenever it is possible I will give some kind of a homework for you and the tentative solutions or some hint of that particular homework will be available in your forum. So, we have some assignment also, we have 8 assignment for the 8 weeks, we have uh, we can discuss through our forums, 2 of our TA, the teaching assistants will help you for this particular discussion and definitely will have a end semester examination after end of the 8 week program and also. So, uh, I have taken the reference of these 2 books and uh, this is the concluding remarks for that and we have already discussed all the systems of structural systems and the objective and uh, my ne next lecture will be on the, the force system uh, in the same uh, module. Thank you very much.